Hello, welcome to downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig, and thank you for being here. Today, I'm speaking with Neil McGarry, who is the founder and former art artistic director for the Bay Colony Shakespeare Company. And he comes to us today via Italy. Neil, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank and you. we're very nice. glad you're here. Well, it's nice to be here. Yeah. Too. So yeah. how's Italy? Um, it's, it's far away. Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's lovely. It's lovely. Um, it's where my wife is from. And the, um, uh, she's from the Italian Alps. And um, her, her dad has been ill for a long time. And um, she'd reached a stage where finally we have three kids. And the oldest is 13. And about two years ago, she said, I, I really want to go home. And it How was nice. Yes, it was in the first year of starting the theater company, <laughs> <laughs> which complicated things a little bit. Um, so, well, how long? When did you start the theater company? I started it in um, the fall of 2012, okay. beginning uh, to do all the paperwork and write the mission statement and the 501c3 and oh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. All of that heavy paperwork. Yes, the heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're, we're uh, going to be talking a little more today about your one-man show mm. that I've heard about. I haven't seen it, so you can tell us about your one-man show. Okay. Well, it's, um, it's Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've been doing it now for three years, and it was um, very enorm enormously proud of it. I'm very, very proud of it. It's a, a, I love, I've always loved the story. Uh, this production, or some variation of this production has been playing for three years now. And mm -hmm. this would be year four. Um, the first year it was named Best of Boston. The second year it was named, uh, and, and I think I got an Ernie nomination, Independent Reviewers of New England. Um, and Excellent. Then, yeah, and then 2014, mm -hmm. that nomination happened again. And uh, and then I won, and and amongst a large group of, of fellow solo artists that um, were doing extraordinary work, and um, I, I felt pleased to be invited to the party, really. But it was, it, it yeah, I'm very. Happy and the with party it. continues. Yeah. 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 And it just so happens that we're going to be hearing you this weekend. Tell us about how that happened at um, the Philharmonic. Yeah. Uh, well, Stephen from the conductor Carol of... Carol Dianis, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, he came to see Christmas Carol at Plymouth Center for the Arts last year. Um, and when it was over, um, he's described it as that it was exhausting. But he, was, <laughs> he came out and was... Um, so incredibly complimentary and said I would love to work with you or to can we can I call you and he finally did and he asked do you think that you can turn this into a 20 minutes you know, like 20 <laughs> minute telling of Christmas Carol mm -hmm. and I, I gave it as much of a college try as I could um, where it would still sound like Dickens, mm -hmm. and that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, it gets the massive rewrite, and it, and it sounds like whatever writer it is that wants to wants to write it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what is special about what I do is that it's it's Dickens' voice, Charles Dickens' voice, which is very particular. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I gave it the college try, um, and it was too long. And he he said, oh, "Okay, what are we gonna?" And I, but as I did it, I thought, "This is a holiday pops concert. Mm -hmm. They're searching for, yes, something that has has meat, um, but there's some. They need happy. It's it's Christmas, and they need and they need happy. Don't and need chains. <laughs> well, maybe. There, and there's a couple of cuts <laughs> that I would like to have back, but." Um, so what I countered with uh, a suggestion of something similar to the cut of The Ghost of Christmas Present. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I described it as what is basically a five movement um, piece. It's the third movement. And Stephen went, I like that idea. Now, can you send that to me? And I sent him the, what I had for a cutting for that. And he wrote back and said, let's talk. And he then, um, we, we came to an agreement about the text. And he said, OK, I'm, I'd love to have you. And we'll have this. I don't know quite what it's going to be. And, we, and I left for Italy. And, uh, and that was four months ago. Mm -hmm. And he'd been writing ever since. And I think he finished it just a short time ago. Mm -hmm. And I got to hear it, hear what he's composed. He's adapted and, and composed music for it. How wonderful. Oh my God, it is extraordinary. Isn't that fantastic? It is beautiful. It's yeah. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've had one other experience like this with the Cape Symphony back before I went to study in the summer of 1987, I worked with the Cape Cod Symphony under Royston Nash uh, with uh, uh, War of the Worlds, a, a composer, a local oh. composer, Don Nardo, had uh, composed this and the symphony did it and I was the narrator. And that was you know, this <laughs> wave of, of music behind you. And Stephen has, has done something, it's, it's delicate and vibrant. Mm -hmm. And, and it's lovely. And he has included, he's got two children's choruses, one for each performance. And for a tune, the, um, Dickens has Tiny Tim sings a song. Oh. And, uh, you know, it, who, uh, and they had a, a, a song about a lost child traveling in the snow from Tiny Tim who had a plaintive little voice and sang it very well indeed. Well, Stephen searched and searched and searched for that song and couldn't find, find one. And finally, he stumbled upon some poem. And he went, I wonder, it's a Chesterton poem, I think. And he said, maybe it's this. And then there was no music. And then he realized he had to compose the song. And then he realized he had to compose the thing. And what he has done is he's created the Ghost of Christmas Present. Wow. And that is um, one of the many beautiful things that we'll be playing this weekend, mm -hmm. these three performances, uh, two on Saturday and one on Sunday, mm -hmm. which has enabled me, you know, being hired to come back to do that, to work as, as an actor. Mm -hmm. you know, it does wind, eventually come down to dollars and cents. And so, oh, great. OK, I can come and, and I can afford to do this. Mm -hmm. And with that was um, having left the Bay Colony Shakespeare Company, I, I had to hand it off. And if I wanted it to continue, and I did want it to continue, um, I handed it over to the former associate artistic director, mm -hmm. Ross McDonald. And he brought to the table um, a gentleman who had retired from business in New York named Eric Joseph. And uh, Eric worked for Clear Channel Entertainment and um, had been an actor years ago. Uh, did a lot of summer stock and a lot of different things and was part of being a New York actor. And then finally said, I'm never, I'm not eating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not eating, so maybe I should do something else. Because um, it's a hard gig, yeah. being an actor. Yeah. And it's kind of like being a musician. It's very much like being. Mm. My, my sister Kate is a, uh, is a twice Grammy nominated jazz vocalist. I have heard your sister Kate yes. at the Spire. Yes. yes. Yeah, and she's extraordinary. And, and it's very, very difficult. How many different jobs you do to, uh, to float this one job. Mm -hmm. um, over the many, many years mm -hmm. that you work and pursue, pursue that thing. Sure. So Eric, he's, he is the executive director of Bay Colony Shakespeare Company. And they have, I had been primarily, initially we, part of the wheel was to do um, 
bring schools theater to the schools, okay. you know, and mm -hmm. but it became I didn't have enough arms, and it was something that I I didn't have the arm for that, and I uh, had aimed more towards main stage work. Ross and Eric, they have really aimed the you know, how do we tighten the circle and um, let's get it in to school, see who will who will take it. Mm -hmm. And they've, as far as I can tell, they've done very, very well. I've had to step back, mm -hmm. um, but coming back, the, the knowledge that I was coming back, well, how about we have this, this is the end of the 2016 season, as the former artistic director comes back and does Christmas Carol. And, um, and that as a, uh, as a benefit, and it's, it's I, I call it my farewell. I'm still kind of the face of the company in mm -hmm. a way because, you know, I founded it and for three years I was in, we did, we did 12 productions. I think I was in. Oh, 12. That, yeah, that's when under, good. under my tenure. Yes. Um, two of them, um, let's see, you know, one of them went to New York. We toured uh, all over the southeast New England. Wonderful. Um, and uh, so I'm, I, and I was in, of the 12, I think I was in 10, 10 of them. So, and I directed two. And so that, I'm that face. Uh -huh. And they need to not, I need to not be the face, and they need to be the face. Okay. But I think we need to see me say, here, here guys, this is yours. Oh, and so nice. I've talked too long, haven't I? No, not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm fascinated by, okay. by uh, what it is you're saying about the production and so on. And I have to tell you that um, I have been part of the Philharmonic only at Memorial Hall. Mm -hmm. So I, I love them. Stephen is just a fantastic human he, being. And he, I went to, I do believe, three of his presentations during the season mm -hmm. and where he was talking about the fact that he was going to have you there doing a play and each time it was a different story and each time he got more and more excited about what it was you were going to be doing mm -hmm. so I can't wait for tomorrow I'm very, for the, yeah. I'm very happy. I wish it's, all of these people that we're, we're talking to could could be there at the I, Philharmonic. I, I wish you all could too. It, it sold out. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Which all is three shows. Marvelous. Um, <laughs> but but I'd, we'll get back to what you're going to be doing after the Philharmonic. Right. So I'm touring. Um, I'm touring my solo show uh, to three venues, to a, a place in Dover, uh, mm -hmm. Dover, the Dover Church. Um, which will be new, um, to the Arlington Friends of the Drama, which is a beautiful little space in Arlington, where that was really where, um, in 2012, it was kind of the first of what would become the Bay Colony Shakespeare Company. Oh. Um, that was where I count it as mm -hmm. the beginning of it. And I performed at, at uh, Arlington. And and I have friends there, so and it sounds like uh, I think there's a m member of the board uh, for Bay Colony Shakespeare Company who has managed to set that up, and that's lovely. So I'm very happy to go mm -hmm. to to Arlington with it. M my f I have a very a, a huge fondness for the Plymouth Center for the Arts. Um, mm -hmm. They. Create. You'll be playing there also. I, and those are the, the Friday night, the 16th, and Saturday, the 17th? If yes. I have the dates correctly. It's the Friday and the Saturday. Yes. And uh, they were, in a way, an artistic home for me. Um, in 2014, I brought, Chris, brought Christmas Carol there. Uh, and the staff, everybody, welcomed me, welcomed me personally, welcomed the show, mm -hmm. and went out of their way to an, an enormous degree mm -hmm. for me and for the company. And then asked, would you, would you bring 2015, our 2015 season? And so 
um, in 2015, I brought uh, The Winter's Tale and Midsummer Night's Dream. And we did those in rep um, four to five nights a week at the Plymouth Center for the Arts. Um, through the month of July, we came to Ketuit, uh, in Ketuit Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. We brought Winter's Tale and then went back to Plymouth and then we closed in Plymouth and brought Midsummer Night's Dream. And then we went to uh, South Shore Conservatory okay. in Hingham. Mm -hmm. And we played in their outdoor space. And so we had a six week run of these two plays in repertory. And, uh, and then uh, at the end of 2015, I brought Christmas Carol to, uh, again, it was you're going to bring Christmas Carol back, aren't you? Yes. And, and, um, and again, the, the welcome. And it's, Isn't it, that wonderful? It is, well, it is wonderful. It, it is wonderful and that um, I live in Italy, but I know that I am part of this artistic community yes. here, um, not, just, not just in Plymouth, but on the Cape in, in mm -hmm. southeast New England. I was a Boston actor for a very long time. Really? I was in, I was in LA, I was in New York. I, uh, oh. but, but there are, and that's, that's important, that's good, but there's the, okay, well, where, where do you hang your hat? And then, and then there's the part of, well, I built a place to hang my hat yeah. for three years. Mm -hmm. and, and part of that was seeking out, well, wait a minute. This is America's hometown. I, I, I'm, how about right here? Mm -hmm. And maybe, and what was, what was lovely, when we were doing Hamlet, um, we, the first season, first season I played in Plymouth, I brought, we brought, um, uh, we played at the Spire mm -hmm. for five weeks and we did eight shows a week. We were doing Much Ado About Nothing, Hamlet and the Scottish play. I'm not gonna say the name, okay. but we were doing that in rep eight shows a week for, for five weeks. And there was, and nobody had ever done this. Who knew about having a Shakespeare company in Plymouth? Who knew that you could sure. have that? I mean, I think Plymouth Plantation was doing something, but it was not, we were right on the main drag in downtown Plymouth, this brand new space. Mm -hmm. um, they were trying to sort themselves out and there was this time that was available and it worked out perfectly. And we built, we built an audience, mm -hmm. an audience, and that audience has really followed. But there was one night, Hamlet's hap gonna happen and uh, these, there's a lot of Harley Davidsons in Plymouth. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yes, and <laughs> these guys pulled up, there were nine of them and they got off their motorcycles and they parked in front of the spire and, hey, what are you doing? What's going on tonight? What are you doing, Hamlet? Oh, for crying out loud. You don't really, are you gonna tell me this has something to do with me? You gonna say, please cut it out. So why, why are you doing this? This guy, I don't know, for whatever reason, he engaged me in this conversation. Really? And I said, I'll comp you. I mean, I needed, we needed the house, uh -huh. we needed, even if they bought chocolate, it would be money that we, right. that we got, you know, a Hershey bar. Um, and I think they did buy a Hershey bar. So they did come. I, they, I said, I'll comp your, your whole group. Wow. The nine of them. And he said, yeah. And six of them said, no, uh. man, no, no, no. And one of the guys said, yeah, I'll go. And then this other guy's wife said, really? This is what you want to do? All right, what the hell, I'll go, we'll go. Yeah. All right, so the three of them came, they had free tickets. They came back and saw every show. Really? And they paid for the other two. Really? And then they threw money in a donation bucket. Wow. And as he was leaving Hamlet, he stopped and he said, listen, I'm, I'm sorry if I was mouthy, but I, I didn't know, I didn't know I could have this. I didn't know that this could be for me. That's heavy. That is heavy. Mm. That is heavy. And, and I didn't, I, we didn't do anything special. It wasn't, I mean, no, I don't, uh, that's wrong. I, I, my, this, the mission, what I felt our mission was, um, was to share and to listen 
I think mm -hmm. that as, as performers, mm -hmm. uh, you get the, the place of, hey, I'm doing Shakespeare. Well, that makes me important because I do Shakespeare. Whereas in reality, reality I don't think that that's important at all. I think that your job then is to open your hands and open your heart and to try and find a way to communicate that and to share it and to do it as simply and really as fully and as open-hearted as mm -hmm. you can and that that is the thing that maybe, just maybe, will communicate this 400-year-old language. It has to be done with skill and with craft just as a, as a professional violinist or you know, sure. whoever's first chair, like how do you get to that place? And, and my intention was to train this company to be in the place where wow. they were Shakespearean athletes. And I had several extraordinary athletes in that company. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was very, ble I've, I've, you know, in all three years, there were several people who, who went across all three years. And just, I was so, so lucky in, in my company of actors in all three years. Um, well, you're saying a mouthful to get three bikers to come in. Well, but, that, but, that's fantastic. But what is it that happened at the end of it? Right. And then they came back, and then they brought people. Wow. I did it. I I comped twenty tickets. Excellent. Twelve of those twenty tickets came back for all three pieces. Wonderful. And so, and it was, and it was literally all of the motorcycle groups that came by and go, oh, oh please, yep. you know, and and that created is the, how do you set it in motion? Right. Right. And, and open the door and, mm -hmm. you know, it's Hamlet. Hamlet's that's long it. and Hamlet's hard. Mm -hmm. But to find out that somebody actually sits down and shares the problem right. who's saying to be or not to be is a, is a conversation with an audience. Mm -hmm. you know, and help me, do you have the answer? You know, am I a coward? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you what ha what, what happened if somebody says yes? You're very... Passionate about well, yeah, it. I, but it. What's the point if you don't yeah. if you don't care? Excellent. And and every every teacher, every every good teacher, every good director, every every good teacher that I've had in my life has cared passionately about what it is that they're trying to right. teach or to lead you to, and I've been blessed blessed by, by my teachers. By Have this. you always done Shakespeare? Or? I always wanted to. I knew okay. as a very young, as a, you know, I started out wanting to be Tarzan. <laughs> Ron Ely and William Shatner have a lot to answer for. Um, <laughs> um, and God help me, there was one day I actually got a gig because I could do a William Shatner invitation. But, um, <laughs> and then it was very hard to have that beaten out of me in, in, in uh, National Shakespeare Conservatory. But, um, yeah, as a 14-year-old, as a I was flunking out of English. And I read, I was a voracious reader. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm struggling. with. I didn't get the answers right on the test. But I know that I'm in the grips of something that is extraordinary. And in essence, I began to teach myself, what does this mean? What, what are these words? What's oh. it like? And to ferret and to realize, oh, I want to do this. Just meant to be, Neil. Yeah, I want, I want, I not only, I want to, yeah. I want to do Shakespeare. I want to play this part. And uh -huh. you start realizing that in some way, there's this, you know, you, what are the parts that you play, and what are they, and then what do they do to you, and what do you, and that, and are you worthy of the work? You know, wow. um, and it's a privilege. It's a privilege to do the work. It's a privilege to stand there in front of uh, of people and to to do it. And um, Dickens, Dickens is of that piece when when I was a. John Sullivan, when he was, our, when he was um, the Barnstable High School drama director, I came up 
I, when he had just started, I was a, uh, a junior in high school, and he did his first Christmas Carol, and he had done it. He's done it many, many times since. But I was the first Scrooge, oh, and um, the uh, and he loved Albert Finney, and part mm -hmm. of the and Albert Finney's performance is Scrooge in the musical, and part right. of that was what is it that he does? He, he, his sense of commitment that he gives to the part. Mm -hmm. But that was, I was unlocking the text. I was going back to the book. What's going on in this book? What's happening? What's happening? Wow. And up until that time, my parents were busy going, there's so many other things you do better. Why in the world do you want to do this? And father would go sing, life upon the wicked stage is nothing for a boy like you. <laughs> and he, and they, had, they suffered through a lot of, a lot of stuff. And, and that performance um, I remember, um, you know, the curtain goes up and it's high school kids and everybody's going crazy. And my parents hugging my, my dad, hugging me and, and, and my mother doing the same, and then she whispered in my ear, if you decide to do this, you'll be okay. Wow. And parental blessing, wow. which so many people, there's many reasons why we become actors, and, yeah. and the, diffi the difficulties and the complexities of familial relationships, and you know, where you're in the theater, and when I was an up-and-coming actor, life was very different. And sure. there's so many people, everybody's in the closet and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, but that was never my world just yeah. because I was in the theater. And, uh, and just, that's just the way things were. But I had friends who were like, oh, my parents don't speak to me. Your, your father, your mother said, you, you can do this? How wonderful yeah, is that? Yeah, it was an incredible blessing. And wonderful. My sister Katie and I, we were all talking about it. it like, imagine if they'd made us be accountants. <laughs> <laughs> what horrible accountants we would have been, you know. <laughs> and parents tried that on many children. And Le how can you blame them? My yeah. son will, my daughter will be able to eat. That's my right. child will be, not, never mind safe. They will have food on the table and yeah. they will, their children will go to college. Yeah. We went, you know, there was a, when I did Hamlet, the first, my first, I finally played Hamlet and was part of the first season. And there was a, uh, there were two gentlemen who took issue with the, with the production. But one of the things they said to me, uh, aside from the, what they were upset about, but it's like, we were at Normandy, okay? We came in on that beach, this, you know, we too. And many of our friends didn't. Right. And there was something in the production that they were very, very, very angry about. And they had every right to be angry mm -hmm. about a, an artistic choice that um, that uh, I, I feel I wished I'd done as an, as artistic director. I was trying to support my director, but at the, mm -hmm. be that as it may, these two men who had helped keep the world safe. Mm -hmm. And gave you a learning experience. Yes, indeed they did. They, indeed they did. And um, so any parent who's trying to get their child to be an accountant uh, so that they know that, that their kid will eat, mm -hmm. I mean... We understand yeah. why. And so you come back to Christmas Carol, and what is it that he's... You, know, you fear the world too much. Here's this, this man who, through the things that have happened to him when he was young. Right. Not only has he put up walls to keep himself safe, he has lashed out. You know, if they better die, they better do it and decrease the surplus population because... Right. You know, uh, there was content behind the words, really. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. a great deal more. And how does he bridge his fear? How does he get on the other side? And what does he... 
he rejoins the human race and realizes that he has a part to play and a responsibility. Right. I think that there's a um, the social contract that exists between us all that helps make civilized society work. Scrooge realizes and says, I've I haven't done enough. I haven't done anything. And um, in the years that I've done this, I've, been, I've had people say to me as they were leaving, thank you, thank you, I've taken too little care. Not knowing, I think, not knowing that they were quoting King Lear. Really? Yeah, not knowing. But they were. Excellent. And, is that, and that's Dickens. That's not me. Mm -hmm. It really, it isn't me. It's, it's him and his text. And, and so I get to bring to do this and to, um, and to give that as a farewell gift to the Bay Colony Shakespeare Company. Wow. And hopefully, I mean, that's, it's a benefit for them. And, and then hopefully, as time goes on, they'll say, oh, maybe we'll have the artistic director back. And, you know, <laughs> and wouldn't well, that, and wouldn't that Neil, be lovely? Well, you yeah. are a passionate man. <laughs> And thank you for what you've been presenting here today. This is, I am very anxious to see the full-blown show tomorrow. And you're going to be doing shows around the area yes. in the next um, two weeks? I'm, so the Plymouth Philharmonic this weekend, where, right. where it's the Ghost of Christmas Present section, with, it, it, it's a, a specialty unto itself. Stephen yes. has created this, um, beautiful piece called The Ghost of Christmas Present, which I am grateful that I get to be a part of and, and humbled and honored it's to be in, in that very lovely company. And then on Thursday at 2 o'clock, Thursday the 15th okay. at 2 o'clock, I'll be at Dover Church and never played there. And I hope to bring these people in. I hope they'll come. Excellent. Uh, we hope they'll come too. We, and then Friday night, we're at uh, we're at Plymouth Center for the Arts. And then mm -hmm. we have to pack up and go to go, go to Arlington for a two o'clock matinee, wow. and then uh, hightail it back from Arlington, you know, close, finish and pack and get back to Plymouth and unpack and <laughs> get it. So the last show is. Uh, it's uh, Saturday the seventeenth. 17th. 17th of December. Yeah. Very good. Well, I certainly wish you everything that you'd wish for yourself. Oh, this. Thank you. Thank you very, and very much. And I thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, it's lovely been, to be here. It's been good. Thank you. And thank you out there for being here. I hope you'll get a chance to see one of the productions that Neil McGarry will be in in the upcoming two weeks. And thank you for being here with us. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. And I hope to see you again real soon.